Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Daniel, and this is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hello, today we're gonna to be talking about the reason for Christmas. So grab your Bible, we're gonna start off in the book of Luke and get ready to dive right in. Christmas is such a special time and sometimes we can forget what it's all about. Sometimes uh, the world's tried to make it about Santa and Christmas trees and uh, in presents. And as we go, sometimes we can go, no, no, no. It's just, it's, the re it's celebrating that Jesus was born and we are half right. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, technically that's what we're celebrating at Christmas. But why was he born? Yeah. And there's things about the purpose that are like hidden in plain sight that are really cool. Like when, when we look at the story and as we're going through, and we're going through this week and, and looking a lot at different, different aspects of the story of his birth, but they make this journey all the way um, to Bethlehem they can't find room in an inn. So they being Joseph and Mary, um, for those who are new and just joining us, welcome. Um, Mary gave birth to baby Jesus. So, <laughs> but, start at the beginning. Yes, yeah, start at the beginning. Make sure we don't leave anybody out here. But they, are, they go in and they're staying in a manger, which is not the spot that you expect the savior of the world to be born. And as they're in the, the manger and they give birth, then you're like, well, what do you do with your baby? And they wrapped it in what they could find there in the manger. And so we, we get this verse. Um, <clears throat> I guess it mentions it in chapter 2, verse 12, that this will be a sign for you, you for you'll find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. This is so disgusting. Like, if you think about the king being born and you're like, oh, you're going to get born in a stable and you're going to get wrapped with some strips of cloth that they found in the stable and lay you in a food trough. <laughs> it's like the hygienic police would not be happy. <laughs> yeah, it seems so backwards. And then, so Jesus is born wrapped in these strips of cloth found in the stable, put in the food trough, and then the angels show up and you're like, all right, the angels are going to show up. Who are they going to tell? And you, you honestly, you think, well, like the wise men should have had the angels show up and be yeah. like, hey, important people, check it out. It happened. You need to find him on 53rd Boulevard. Like, <laughs> like here's the address. Here's the address. Stop following a star. We'll give you better directions. Like, follow me. This is kind of what you'd expect. You'd expect angels to make the announcement to the most important people. Yeah. But what happens? Shepherds are watching their sheep in a field, and the angels show up and scare the bejeebies out of the shepherds. <laughs> I don't know if you can imagine just like being there yeah. and you're watching the sheep. And if you ever like been in the zone where you're just kind of like doing a task, minding your own business, half paying attention, yeah. half daydreaming, and then had someone walk up and say something to you <laughs> out of nowhere and just freak you out. But I can imagine the shepherds are just kind of like chilling, and then all of a sudden, Boom! There's an angel. And they're just freaking out. And he tells them um, good tidings. And the angel appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. The angel said to them, Fear not, for I bring you good news and great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you that you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly a, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying glory to God in the highest, as and on earth peace among the, those with whom he is pleased. It goes on, and these shepherds are the first one to get the announcement, and these shepherds go and they check out the baby. And when the angels um, had went away, the shepherds said to one another, let's go into Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord had made known to us. And when they found the spot where the baby was lying in a manger, and when they saw it, they made it known, saying that um, had been told to them concerning the child. And all who heard 
it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. Now, I have heard that part, but I was listening to Rick Renner this last year, and he talked about what just happened. He talked about the cloth, yeah. and he talked about the shepherds. And he said, when a, 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 ba- uh, a lamb had a baby, and especially if was, these were going to be a lamb that may be sacrificed, they would wrap it up and they would set it aside to be inspected to make sure that it was a spotless lamb. Yeah. And th- the shepherds that were near Bethlehem weren't regular shepherds. These were special shepherds um, that, that watched the sheep that would be sacrificed at the temple. They were the ones to watch over the the sacrificial lambs. These were the ones who'd be watching and looking for the spotless lamb for sacrifice. And from the moment that this story began, from, from it, it was not just a testimony to, hey, here's the king. It was, hey, here he comes to be our sacrifice. Yeah. Here he comes, and the announcement's going to go to those who are going to inspect the perfect Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. And it's this beautiful picture as, as hey, this is, this is who he is. Yeah. This is what he came to do. These shepherds looked over the Passover lamb, and he would become our Passover lamb. Yeah. And, and this is the reason for Christmas. The reason for Christmas um, is his death, burial, and resurrection. And the reason for the death, burial, and resurrection is his love for you, is his love for me. Yeah. And when we recognize that, it's just, it just like blows me away going, oh, there was so much beauty in this. And so much of what seemed strange was so intentional as you had us in mind. And it just blows me away and makes me so grateful. Yeah, so good. All right, let's say our confessions together. Jesus bore my sickness. Jesus bore my sickness. And carried my pain. And carried my pain. Therefore, I give no place to sickness or pain. Therefore, I give no place to sickness or pain. Father, because of your word. Father, because of your word. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. I overcome the world. I overcome the world. The flesh and the devil. The flesh and the devil. By the blood of the lamb. By the blood of the lamb. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. No evil will befall me. No evil will befall me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over me. For you've given your angels charge over me. They keep me in all of my ways. They keep me in all of my ways. And my pathway is life. And my pathway is life. Healing and health. Healing and health. Jesus took my infirmities. Jesus took my infirmities. And bore my sicknesses. And bore my sicknesses. I refuse to allow sickness to dominate my body. I refuse to allow sickness to dominate my body. The life of God flows within me. The life of God flows within me. Bringing healing to every fiber of my being. Bringing healing to every fiber of my being. That which God has not planted. That which God has not planted. Is dissolved and rooted out. Is dissolved and rooted out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 1 Peter 2.24 1 Peter 2.24 is engrafted is engrafted into every fiber of my being into every fiber of my being and I am alive with the life of God and I am alive with the life of God the same spirit the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me lives in me permeating his life permeating his life through my veins through my veins sending healing sending healing throughout my body th- throughout my body God, we thank you that you paid the price, that you came on purpose to be the sacrifice for us, that you paid the price for our salvation, that you paid for our healing. I thank you that by your stripes we're healed. God, I speak yes. healing into those that are joining us. They have declared your word over their life and over their body, that they would see it come to pass today. Yes. I speak healing into those, those bodies. I command cancer to leave. I command bones to be made strong. I command inflammation to leave. I command minds to be peaceful. God, yes. that depression and anxiety are broken and that you replace depression and anxiety with joy. God, I thank you that you have your way in and through us. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that this encouraged you. If it did, could you take a minute and hit like, share, and subscribe? As always, we want to invite you to get into God's Word each day for yourself to discover who He is and what He has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.